Okay, thank you, uh, Ferran, for uh, very kind introductions, and thank you for the project for inviting me here to, to speak on, on this uh, very preliminary stage of, uh, of the paper. So in short, uh, I'm sure that all of us know about how bad was money politics in Indonesia uh, after the decentralizations, after the democratizations, not only at the national level, but more importantly, when the market for elected posts in more than 500 sub-national entities in Indonesia uh, open for literally free market competitions. So I want to seal that kind of uh, uh, phenomena by saying that this is uh, the locally elected post is a free market. So you win the positions and you invest in that one and you get the prize and then you make your investment return out of the positions that you win. So, of course, this is a, a very a nasty way to, to frame that one, but this is one way to see that one. So I link this one with the discussions about whether a democracy is public goods, club goods, or private goods. So what I'm arguing here is, we are arguing here is basically the nature of the democracy should be a public good should be by, by, the, by the ideal of democracy, but by looking at what ha was happening in Indonesia, in the local democracy particular, in particular, the nature of the public goods has been reduced into, at best, limited club votes, if you don't like. So if you cannot, you cannot, it cannot be met uh, pure public goods or good public goods, but at least it should be more inclusive uh, club goods. So that's roughly the, the idea of this, the, uh, of this argument. So this is uh, my joint work with uh, a colleague uh, from uh, University of Indonesia, Atman Mursal, and he's, do, he's working now on his PhD thesis on political marketing. So he know much about the insight from the field uh, compared to myself. So I learned a lot from, from, from him. So that's why this is the beauty of collaborations. Okay, I'll start with a, a, a background of where the the, the, with the, st uh, the state of Indonesia's local democracy. So what we mean by Indonesia's local democracy is electing local leaders. Uh, we have now, Indonesia has now uh, 34 provinces and close to 500 uh, districts. So what happened since uh, the democratic transitions in 1998? So between 1999 and 2004, uh, the local heads were elected by the local parliaments. Before 1999, uh, the system was similar, but basically the local heads were uh, chosen by Jakarta, by the central government, under the autocratic new order. So after the fall of the new order, the central government just lost their power to choose local leaders in all Indonesian uh, localities. So the local parliaments now have had the power. So it was between 1999 and 2004. So we, say, we can say that one as a le legislative heavy uh, period. So uh, the, if you want to be a governor, a bupati, or a, a mayor, you have to bribe the local members of the parliament to, uh, to get the simple majority in the parliament to get elected. And every year you have to deliver your accountability speech, accountability report. And to get your report uh, uh, passed or accepted, you will have an uh, annual uh, uh, deal with the uh, simple majority of the members of the parliament. So, so there was a set dissatisfaction about the situations uh, uh, to, to, to move away from the legislative heavy. So since 2005, uh, what has been introduced was the direct elections of the local heads instead of uh, elected by the uh, parliament, the local parliament. So now in this year, uh, uh, about later this year, uh, the third round of that uh, uh, series of local elections will be, will be started. If I'm not mistaken, it will be in December this year. So the first round will be between 2005 and 2008, and then the second round between 2010 and 2014, last year. And then we are about to start the, the third round. So what we can call, how can we frame the local direct elections in Indonesia? We can say that one as the peak of political decentralizations. In addition to fiscal decentralizations, administrative decentralizations, and, and, and bureaucratic decentralizations. So 
what, what we mean by at the peak of political decentralizations, the politics at the local level can be totally disconnected with the political central government. You can have different kind of arrangement in, in each localities which are not in line with the political uh, 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 constellations, uh, political setting in, in the central government. So just roughly speaking, this is the, 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 so, the so many elections in Indonesia. At national level, we have parliament, uh, parliamentary elections and direct presidential elections. And at the local level, uh, they have uh, direct local elections for the governors and mayors. So this is uh, just to familiarize yourself with the map of Indonesia, it's a big country, more than 240 million people, 34 provinces, 497 districts. Mm -hmm. This is the latest number that I, I got. Maybe now uh, the numbers uh, could be more than that because of the creations of new uh, districts. So this is roughly the, in short, the step-by-step the -step of our arguments. So the first one is we start with the notions that by ideals, we should see the democracy as public goods <coughs> rather than democracy, rather than the government is, is, is occupied by the autocracy or by the kingdom or whatever. So democracy should be, uh, 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 the government should be elected by the people, for the people, by the people, and for the sake of the people. So, so by nature, democracy should be seen as a public goods. But what happened in the local elections, as I said before, local elections has become the marketplace. So you have the price to win, you invest, and you, you, you look at yourself, you, 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 you try to see your chance, and then you make decisions, and you find your sponsor, you finance that one, and then you make the investment return. Uh, we link this one with the way the uh, political process of elections is financed, uh, whether by the public sources, by sponsors, or by uh, state subsidies. We link that one with that, uh, with that uh, uh, aspect. So, the next key argument is, because of it is a marketplace, so the process of winning an elected post is more on the effort to get that one, more on, can be seen as a centrally, a personally centered efforts, a center around the political candidates. So you are not someone who will be uh, championed by the party, but you have to look for which party will champion you. If party A is not willing to champion you, you will find party B. If party B is not willing to champion you, you move to party C. So, so you will see a very mobile connections between one particular candidate and the options of available parties that will nominate you. So you see the market of nominations here. Before the markets for uh, getting popular votes from the uh, uh, direct elections. So from that one, because of the, the nature of the contestations in the local elections, uh, we would like to argue that the, because of the personally center effort of winning the locally, local elected post, the way the post is treated later on is closer to the profit goods or at best limited club goods. So, so you have two kinds of uh, uh, managing public office at the local level. One is the public service of fulfilling the, uh, uh, the need of the public, free education, uh, health services, things like that, infrastructure. But beyond that one, what is more important, what is more dominant is how you would reward your political sponsor, how you make the return on your investment, things like that. So you capture the local budget as the return, as the price to win in the, in, in the, in the contest. So why it is happening? This is because of the dominance of personally centered efforts in winning the elected post, rather than the collective endeavor. What is collective endeavor? What we mean by collective endeavor is, is, is you win the elected post because of the idea, because of you have the movement to support you. Uh, like, like here, for example, uh, like in developed democracies, you have the party and the party is, is, is champion you and will make uh, pre-selections and you are the best from the party that can be supported. So, and then you have uh, the strong collective endeavor that will support your, uh, 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 your, your, you in winning the, the, the elected post. So this is, I want to contrast between personally centered efforts and collective endeavor. So I'll start with the with the with the first one. So the first just, argument. just for clarification, sorry to interrupt you, but do do the candidates can be re-elected for elections? Yes. 
two terms, maximum. <coughs> so it will be very good for you if you hold the first term and you get this chance five years to abuse the, uh, the office to campaign or to uh, uh, build uh, patronage, patronage connections, things like that, to increase your chance to win the second term. So, so that's another, another way to look at that one as well. So okay, democracy as public goods. The most important thing here is, the, the last point here, if democracy is public goods, we know that from the economic theory, public goods is prone to the market failure compared to the profit goods. Because of one way to overcome the market failure, you don't let the financing system or the management of the, uh, of the market totally free to the market. It has to be some government interventions to prevent the market failures. So the question here is, to what extent the uh, local election should be financed by the state? I will look at the one later. Currently speaking, roughly speaking that I can say now, the technicalities of the elections, the, the, the polling stations, the local elections commissions are financed by the state. But more costs will be needed for each candidate to campaign to buy the nominations, to strategizing, to build patronage, to whatever. So, so more money are spent on that market. And most of that one, not most, nearly all now are out of uh, 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 help from the, the, the public funds. But at the end of the day, they will, they will steal the public funds to, to finance that one at the end of the day. So you like it or not, it is not publicly financed, but at the end of the day, it, it will be public funds that will be used to, 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 to finance that one at the end of the day. So this is roughly my explanations about uh, how to see the local elections as a marketplace. So you have a local elected post to contest. We have now uh, around four, 531 elected posts. Okay, the contest of this one will be started this December and then will continue in next year and following year. And then you have to, the price to win. You have the, 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 the power to manage the local budget. And the, the, the amount of budget would be amazing if, if you uh, sum up all the public uh, budget, uh, local, local government budget in Indonesia. And you know that in Jakarta itself, the size of the, of the APBD was about uh, 70 trillion rows. Um, and then you have the contenders, the political candidates. And in one local election, you have uh, roughly between two to ten pairs of candidates, the head and the deputy head. The last one that I re can remember in, in the uh, municipality of Padang, there were ten pairs contesting for the mayor of the city. Half of them will be nominated by the parties, and half of them, five of them, are from the uh, independent candidates. And you know that. Uh, you get the, you collect the uh, 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 ID cards from the uh, few thousand of uh, three, four percent of the populations to support your nominations, but you know that a lot of overlaps in, 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 in that one, because there's a market for that one as well, the market for supporting you as the uh, independent candidate. Then how to win? So you have to, to see this one as, as the market. And, and you do market observations, uh, you, you calculate your chance, if you think that you can win, and then you, you try to find the investment for that one. And then the first thing to do is, you try to buy party nominations. Just basically, you buy, literally you buy party nominations. And then if you can't buy the party nominations, maybe you can try the independent uh, road to be nominated by collecting uh, three to four, five percent of the ID cards of the uh, eligible voters in that region. And for that one, you have to buy, maybe for two, three dollars per ID card, so they will submit ID card, maybe they will sign the form or whatever, and another independent candidate can come to them and they will sell it again. So there are markets for that one, and there are brokers for that one as well. And then, at the end of the day, uh, Literally speaking, you can buy the votes. You can buy the votes through two means. One is through patronage. You donate uh, the uh, organizations, you uh, give money to the mosque, to the charity, things like that, to, 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 to win the vote. Or literally speaking, just a few hours, uh, two hours, uh, five hours before the, the voting, you, you just uh, deliver uh, cash in an envelope to the potential voters. So you need to strategize this one. And the next one is, this is a growing industry. So I told uh, 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 Veran before the seminar that 
if you are a, a, a political scientist, it would be a good idea to set up a political consultancy in Indonesia because the market for this one is really huge. You can earn a lot of money by uh, providing uh, political consultancies to the aspiring hundred, maybe thousand of uh, 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 candidate, political candidates uh, 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 wanting to, 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 to contest in the, in the local elections in Indonesia. And this is a huge market. Survey, uh, market uh, mapping, and then if, even if you want to bribe, you need to know where to bribe, where to target, because you don't want to, to, to win the, the, the uh, uh, landslide majority. What you need is just to increase the margin. So we have this is a captive, the safe vote, and you need a little more to, to, to win the margin, and then where, where you, will, you, you need to distribute the, 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 the cash in envelope. You need to know that one, and, and, and political scientists can help in, 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 in knowing this one. And this is a true uh, 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 growing business in Indonesia as well. And you can help them, you can ask them also to how to improve your image, to, get, to, to uh, do proper public speaking, to, to, uh, to market yourself, things like this, everything. And then, <clears throat> this is uh, my reflection, our reflections about the state of Indonesia's democracy, since I have only five minutes left. What, what we can see here is, when we look at the series of electoral reforms since 1999, and the peak of that one was the introductions of direct elections of local leaders in 2005, one, and the second one is the uh, open list proportional representations in the uh, parliamentary elections. So we can see that the level of electoral competitions in Indonesia has been very, very strong, very, very strong, very fierce. Okay, but. Unfortunately, we can, we, can, we can say that it has not been complemented with strong or adequate check and balances. And you know that there are two components of democracy, electoral competition and check and balances, and the two has to have to present at the same time. Otherwise, you will have uh, different kinds of democracy. So on that, on that competitions, uh, I wrote an article saying that maybe the the nature of electoral competitions in Indonesia is now has become more American than America. So, because of the overconsumption of the elections, we have elections, uh, local parliaments, provincial parliament, district parliament, national parliament, the national senate, uh, and then elections for the local leaders, and you have, and, and then you have uh, uh, presidential elections, and presidential elections can be uh, two rounds if it cannot be finished in one round. So, so many elections. So uh, p uh, people have been uh, speaking about the election fatigue, things like that, and, 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 um, and the worry was we are about to see is that declining enthusiasm to, to the elections. So an, an elections has become an industry, a marketplace. So this is a step-by-step -step process of uh, the, the election industry for the local leader. So the objective is to win the elected post, and you target the market, you make the investment decisions, you strategize and then you make the return. How to, re how to return your investment? Just to, to, to abuse the public funds, to use the connections, to give a business license and to direct contracts because you'll spend money. Uh, managing the local budget means to spend the money, okay? And even though if you, you, you want to do the spending in the correct term, say if you are head, the head of the public works, public works department at, at, at a district, if you don't ask, the, uh, the, the contractors who got the project will, will voluntarily give you the, some return on the, on, on, from the project, let alone if you organize that kind of return, 10%, 20%, whatever. So let me get, go back to the main argument. So the elected post can be seen as closer to the private goods, or at least, at best, limited club goods, rather than the, the, the supposedly public goods nature of the democracy. Because what I want to see the elected post is the, the final end of the democratic process. Because democracy is the road to power, and at the end of the day, democracy is the process of selecting the leader. And you have the mechanism to punish the leader, to reward the leader, things like that, so, rather than compare with the autocratic system. Why? Why it is closer to club goods or private goods? Because of the dominance of personally center efforts vis-a-vis -vis collective endeavor at the party level. So we link this one. Okay, I don't, I don't want to discuss the checkbook democracy in the US, but the idea could be similar because elections campaigning has been bought by the uh, big money 
And you know that we heard from the U.S. that the Republicans is owned by big oils and the Democrats is owned by uh, Wall Street, something like that. So uh, this is related to the checkbook democracy in the U.S. So w why it is that? Why this is the situation, the, the personally center effort? Because of two things. One is because of the financing pattern, and the second one is because of the, the degree of party in institutionalization. So, about the financing pattern, what we can see from the efforts of each political candidate to win the elected polls, this is about only two things. One is self finance, or you are financed by key sponsors. Self-finance, you can be rich, you can be uh, an entrepreneur, you can be a businessman. So you can sell your house, you can sell your company, or you can whatever, whatever, whatever. So you put 5 to uh, 15 billion rupees now, this is the cost of uh, winning the uh, roughly uh, average numbers of winning the, the seat for uh, Bupati, maybe more now, I don't know the exact numbers. So you, you, can, you can do self-finance, mostly from the uh, political candidates from the uh, uh, entrepreneur uh, background. Or you use few key sponsors. In most cases, they are the one who will benefit from business license that you will you will uh, make uh, you will you will give as a return when you 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 you, you, you get elected. So the way we develop this argument is based on uh, observations of eleven pairs of political political candidates. So the approach was we we had access to the directly to the candidates or the deputy, or to the key person within the, uh, the central ring of the uh, campaigning team. So we get an insider view. Of course, we need to complement this one from uh, more wider investigations from the nature of the, the elections uh, during that time, but uh, more work still needs to be done. But this is roughly the mapping of that one. So for the sake of anon anon anonymity, so we don't want to name that uh, candidate in, in region, but roughly speaking, this is the distributions. One candidate for the province and uh, 10 for the uh, districts, regencies or municipalities, uh, three in Java and five in Sumatra, three in Kalimantan. Eight won, three defeated. And uh, we have two uh, incumbents who got re-elected. And we have 10 for the political party nominations and one from the independent candidate. As you know, that as you can guess, the independent candidate lost the elections <laughs> because of uh, not enough. But the reason was money. I don't even I, I spend enough money to, to, to organize that one. So money was what was the key there. And then this is the party nominations three from Golkar, uh, five from Golkar, three from the uh, PPP, and then one from Democrat from, from PDIP. So the key findings. So we asked them about the efforts, how to win the elected post. Even though they are nominated by the party, even though they are the candidate was the head of the party at the regional level, they can say that we can't rely on the party. They have to build a team around the candidates, personally attached to the candidates. And that's the way to win the elections, not based on the efforts, collective efforts at the party level. So that's what I mean by uh, 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 contrasting the personally centered effort vis-a-vis -vis collective endeavor at the party level. So this is partly because of the, the so-called weak party ins ins institutionalizations. And all of them, all of them that we talk to, uh, they prefer the current system of local direct elections. So, okay, I, I have mentioned this one. Why personally centered effort? The situation is rooted in two things. One is because of the personalized financing, either self-finance or few key sponsors, and then because of weak party institutionalization. But I'll show you two exceptions, two patterns of exceptions to this hypothesis. So this hypothesis could, be, could, could help to explain the general pattern, but no way... Uh, 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 this is the only one to explain. So there are two exceptions here. One is the case of the Islamist uh, PKI's party, where I, what I can argue that they are more institutionalized, uh, with stronger ideology, with a very strong cadre-based uh, system at the grassroots level. So in the case of PKI's, uh, when they promote their own candidate, internal candidate, 
But what we can observe is they are more toward the collective endeavor rather than the personally centered effort. In that case, the candidate is less important the party that nominates him. But it is not the case with other parties. And the second one is, this is also anomaly. The, 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 libera the political liberation in Indonesia has also provided a venue for the emergence of some good candidates with good reputations, clean good reputations. But the emergence of good candidates is more on exceptions rather than the rule. So one case that I can say here is uh, the case of Gamon Fauzi, who won the, uh, the governorship of West Sumatra in 2005, and in 2009 he was uh, uh, chosen by, uh, uh, as the Ministry of Home Affairs. And before that one, he was two-term uh, uh, district head in, 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 in that province. So about the PKS. Do I have two more minutes? Okay. About the PKS. <coughs> there are two possibilities for the PKS. One is they will promote their own candidate when they are quite confident with their own candidate. They will promote that one. And in this case, the nature of the, if they, if they win, or if the nature of nominations, there's more on collective endeavor. So say, for example, uh, a candidate for a mayor nominated by the PKS. So in organizing the, the campaigns, the, the financing, things like that, it will be the party who will work for the candidate, not the candidate who is telling the party what to do. So the party will have a very, a very much more dominant role rather than the candidate itself. This is the case when they promote their own internal candidate. But the situation is different. If they, they are asked to support uh, external candidate, in that case, they will sell party nominations and they will charge much higher price. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they behave just like an uh, uh, income source for them. So they will cross subsidize uh, getting, uh, uh, selling nominations here, and then they will take that money to finance uh, to win the elections for their own internal candidates somewhere else in, in, in the region. So that's what I can say about, about uh, PKS that can be seen as an exception rather uh, uh, to the model that I, I, I explained earlier. And the second one, about the good candidates. There are a couple of them now. The mayor of Surabaya now, and the, uh, the governor of DKI, Jokowi, when he was uh, the mayor of Solo, and the, the mayor of Jakarta, governor of Jakarta, and a couple of other uh, good local uh, heads in Indonesia. So let's look at briefly to uh, the case of Gamon Fauzi. He was two-term regent in, in between 1995 to 2005, and he won an anti-corruption award. And he was known for uh, not willing to deal with the uh, contractors, uh, businessmen uh, uh, in dealing with government projects. So he has a very good, uh, uh, good, uh, 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 clean track record as the as the uh, uh, two-term bupati. And when he was nominated in 2005, the first round of direct elections in Indonesia, he was not dying to find party nominations. So he's not he didn't buy the party nominations. But at the end of the day, he, he was not able to find the uh, big tickets for the nominations. But at the end of the day, last, in last minute before the, before the uh, uh, registrations, he was supported by two minor parties in the region, which is the PDIP and Bulan Bintang. And he didn't buy the nominations. Even he was supported by the party with uh, some money as the startup of uh, campaigning uh, 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 to, to finance his campaign. So, and not only that, around him, because of the clean track record, there, are, there were movements around the governor from the civil society organizations, his friends, things like that, who really wants to get the good people to, to be the governor in the region. So we can see here a kind of collective endeavor of the concerned people here, rather than the, the candidates really organizing uh, finance, political supports to, to win the elected post. And he was, he was, he was, uh, his, 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 wi his uh, winning in the government elections in 2005 was, was, I think, the, the really an exceptional case compared to other, the result of other elections in Indonesia uh, during the first round of uh, direct elections. So even then, after winning the elected post, he refused to favor the parties that nominated him. Because the party was, was hoping that some reward would be given in return of winning that one. No, he refused to do that one. Uh, 
And then he served as the Ministry of Home Affairs in 2009-2004, and now, I don't know, maybe he's now in a very nice uh, retirement now, uh, in, in, in his late 50s. So, but the case of the good candidate like this is more than exceptions rather than the rule. So the, the political liberalization has not been able to, 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 to create the good candidates, to, 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 to promote the good candidates as the, the model outcome of the uh, uh, political liberalizations. And some implications. One is, I'll be very brief, one minute, just one minute. We can see that the industry will continue. Yeah, fueled by political corruptions, the industry will continue, no doubt. <coughs> but I doubt that one will be sustainable because of, you have uh, incomplete democracy. One is you have strong electoral competitions without adequate, uh, sufficient uh, checks and balances. And then, this is related to also the party and campaign financings. Maybe the discussions needs to be uh, 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 focused around how to return the elected post into the supposedly public good nature of the democracy. But to do that one, uh, the next implication is what about the uh, uh, party financing or campaign financing in Indonesia. And the second one is about, the next one is about party institutionalizations. So can we say that PKS is a better uh, example of uh, party institutionalization in Indonesia? Could be, but this is for further discussions. I think I'll stop here and uh, I'll look forward for your uh, inputs and suggestions. Thank you. Well, so now it's time for